Welcome to Chippewa Registered Nursing. You're at Chippewa Enriched Nursing School. All right, so today we're talking about the endocrine system and we're going to focus on hypothyroidism. Now, hypothyroidism is hyposecretion of the thyroid gland, okay? So that means we are not producing enough. Things are not working out the way we'd like it to work out. And so there is a low, hypo stands for low. So when you think about hypo, think about low. I always use little things to try and remember um, the meaning for words in nursing because you know it's a lot of words and if you write hypo, you write hypo and you write low, hypo, low, L-O, low, okay? That's a good way to remember hypo, low. So hypo, thyroidism means low secretion of the thyroid hormone. So let's talk about the system that this falls under. It falls under the endocrine system, right? And let's talk about the pata, the pathophysiology of this. What is my thyroid? What really is my thyroid? And what does it do? What does it do? So the thyroid is a small butterfly-shaped gland located at the front of your neck. So anterior, like right here, is your thyroid gland. And it shapes like a butterfly. If you can see right here, yeah, it shapes like a butterfly and it's located anterior at the front of your neck. The main function is to produce T4 and T3 hormones. So it controls the body metabolism, like the, the basal metabolic rate, if you're hot, if you're cold. But when you're hypo, which, which means low, you're cold, you're chilly. And this controls the body metabolism rate and growth and growth along with growth so your thyroid also produces calcitonin and all right so a lot of time people get the calcitonin confused with the parathyroid okay because the parathyroid gland is behind the thyroid and this produces hormones that helps to release calcium in the bloodstream while calci calcitonin that's produced by the thyroid this one does the opposite so it inhibits the the calcium from getting too high in the blood while the parathyroid it increases the level of calcium in the bloodstream so don't get them confused in further lesson we will take on the parathyroid so we'll understand it even better okay so I want you to understand the negative feedback loop because I remember being in nursing school. The, neg so the negative feedback loop always gets me in nursing school. And now I finally understand it and I want you to understand it too. So the negative feedback loop is basically helping the thyroid to maintain homeostasis in the body. All right. Keep that. So it wants everything to be at a balance. It doesn't want it to be off, too high, too low. So that's where the negative feedback loops come in. So the hypothalamus in the brain, right, controls how much the TRH, that's a shortening for thyroid releasing hormone. So it stimulates the pituitary gland to produce thyroid stimulating hormone, which is the TSH which then stimulates the thyroid gland to produce T4 and T3. Now, T4 and T3, those are the two hormones that the thyroid produces, right? And listen, and this is a key point, T4 and T3 need adequate level of iodine in the body. So in order for this thyroid to function properly, so make enough T4 and T3, even though all of this is taking place, we still need enough iodine in the body. And a lot of NCLEX and nursing questions will come up about the iodine that's needed in, in the body. All right, so let's talk about a patient. Patient comes in, because this is how we're going to picture things. Patient comes into the hospital. Patient A comes in with these symptoms. So this is how the patient is going to present. Patient will present fatigue, weight gain, right? We're not doing anything different, yet still we're gaining weight. 
um, bradycardia, so that's the heart, which is very low heart rate, below 60s, and ear loss, cold intolerance, patient is just cold, shivering, it's 80 degrees outside, and this patient is asking for blankets, okay? Decreased ability to sweat, puffy face, so the face just look, you know, bloated, uh, and no sweat, puffy face, cardiac enlargement tendency, um, and can develop heart failure, all right? So these are some of the common symptoms that your patient may present with. Now, when they come into the hospital, in order to diagnose this patient, we need to check the patient level because this is how we're going to diagnose. We can't diagnose with our eyes, right? And even though they come in with subjective um, symptoms, we still need to run blood tests. Okay, so they're going to test the level for the T4 and the T3. Usually, they don't ask for the levels for them, like within the normal levels for them in exams, but I'll put it below, okay? And I'll put it on the screen also. So they will run the blood test. When they run the blood test and they see that the T4 is low, the T3 is low, and the TSH is high, then we know that, listen, this is hypothyroidism. So the reason, think about it, the reason why T3, um, the TSH is high is elevated because some people might say, why is the TSH high? And I have to remember that the T4 and the T3 is low, but then I have to also remember that the TSH is high. Yes, the TSH is high. And the TSH I because, remember, the negative feedback loop, that's where that comes in. You have to remember that. While the, the, the hypothalamus is producing the TRH, the thyroid stimulating, releasing hormone to stimulate the pituitary, the, the pituitary gland is producing TSH to stimulate the thyroid and it's still not producing enough. It's still not producing enough. So it keeps stimulating it more and more and more just to get it to function and to work for it to for the body to say yes i have enough t4 and t3 but that's not happening so your tsh is going to be elevated because yes we're producing more tsh more thyroid stimulating hormone to get that thyroid to produce the t4 and the t3 but it's not happening so that's why the tsh is elevated the TRH is elevated, which is a thyroid releasing hormone, and the T4 and the T3 is low because it is IPO, which is low. All right? So that's how you have to remember that. So everything is low, yes, except the hormones that are working to stimulate the pituitary gland, to stimulate the thyroid gland. Those are elevated because things are not working. And if you're trying to beat boom 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 you're trying to break this rock and it's not breaking you're gonna beat it even more boom 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 to get it to break so it's the same thing that is taking place in our body trying to get this t4 and this t3 to go up the rank okay so we diagnose our patient right and we know the pattern we know the system we know it works in the brain we know about the hormones, we did the blood work, and now it's time for the nursing intervention. Now, whatever order the doctor put in for this patient, we are going to follow the orders. We're going to medicate the medication as prescribed. This is very important. And we're going to teach our patient because nursing is all about assessment, teaching, right? So intervention, the number one thing that we do is to replace the thyroid hormone which is called levothyroxine or cintrodyne they are the same medication it's just you know you have the brand name the generic name yeah so another thing is teaching so before we even reach to the teaching our patient is cold we're going to give nice warm blankets to keep our patient warm you know don't have the temperature too low we bring it to like 75 degrees you know all for comfort we're going to take our time Tell the patient, you know, to take time to do stuff because remember, they get very fatigued. 
their mind they're not really thinking so clear it's like everything is just slow so we have to be very gentle with our patients take time with them and provide the best comfort for them also when it comes to nutrition we have to teach our patients to follow like a low cholesterol low fat diet low calorie diet because remember our patient is gaining a lot of weight and we don't want them to continue gaining that weight and even a little exercise program that would help them to burn some calories so that will help them to feel more comfortable so low calorie low cholesterol low saturated fat diet a exercise program avoid sedative and opioid remember they're already not thinking clearly everything is low you don't want to slow them down more and to slow down the respiratory system more using opioids so we avoid opioids and we use like um acetaminophen which is also called Tylenol right that will take care of the little aches um you're going to treat constipation even the digestive system everything is moving very slow think of everything of being low slow fatigue lethargy so everything is low and slow so we're going to treat our patient with um maybe some Marilax to help them with the constipation right and remember symptoms vary per patient everyone is different and so some patients may come in with one symptoms others may come in with other symptoms all right another thing that i want to emphasize on is also the roles of the t3 and the t4 please remember this because this is very very common in exam question whether for nursing exam or for the NCLEX these questions will come about so rules of t3 t4 we know that it can increase the heart rate depending if it's high if it's low stimulate the sympathetic nervous system and that's why you know our patient men may be very cloudy and they can't think right um decrease or increase of the body temperature regulate the TSH produced by the 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 pituitary gland increase or decrease basal metabolic rate and we know that's why um the patients will end up gaining weight because the metabolic system is just slow right so be sure to teach the patient their discharge teaching when it comes on to centroid or levothyroxine sodium this medication should be taken before breakfast in the morning so usually at the hospital this medication is usually prescribed at like 7 a.m so we'll give the patient this medication between 6 30 to 7 30 a.m this should be taken on an empty stomach in the morning before breakfast like 30 minutes to an hour before breakfast make sure you teach your patient that try to take their medication the same time during the, the morning um so they keep a good schedule right never stop teach your patient never stop taking this medication abrupt just one time boom get up one morning okay i'm gonna stop taking my medication because this will cause the coma the my exedema coma is very common we stop taking medications just like that just to explain about the my exedema coma it's a rare it's very rare but it is life-threatening so when you're in a state of hypothyroidism low um secretion of thyroid hormone for a long time you can really get into this coma right and we don't want that for a patient teach them to take Tylenol for pain um and you know keep taking their medications on time in the morning before breakfast this is very important and it's a very big question that i see a lot on exams and also on NCLEX okay and also the myxedema coma they'll bring you the questions about it not a lot but they'll bring you the questions about it also please note this one of the main cause of the hypothyroidism is called by Hashimoto's disease and Hashimoto's disease is basically a autoimmune disease and you know with autoimmune disease the thyroid the body which is the immune system i should say is basically attacking the thyroid gland and when it attacks it when it secretes the antibodies that attack the thyroid gland it's basically killing the hormones so the thyroid is working 
the thyroid gland is working it's producing the t4 and the t3 but the because of the autoimmune disease which is the Hashimoto's disease this is causing the cells the t4 and the t3 to die so then the body is not getting enough t3 and t4 hormones because our own immune system our own body within um, the antibodies within our bloodstream within our lymphatic system they are killing the thyroid hormones okay so that is also one of the main function and i also see that question on exams so know that the auto so know that autoimmune disease also affects the thyroid and it's called the Hashimoto's disease and that's also one of the main along with the iodine deficiency so it's autoimmune and iodine deficiency those two are two of the main cause of the thyroid of the hypothyroidism so thank you for watching ship it all registered nursing on hypothyroidism our next lesson will be about the my exedema coma along with the hyperthyroidism see you soon bye remember to like subscribe comment below and i hope you pass your exams bye